Hey guys, what's going on? It's uh, Andy Baker here of andybaker.com and owner of Kingwood Strength and Conditioning. And uh, I want to do a little update video uh, for everybody on kind of where I'm at following my um, surgery on my, uh, on my right bicep tendon. So for a lot of you guys that follow me, you know that about one month ago, actually one month ago, um, almost to the day, I ruptured the uh, distal bicep tendon on my right arm doing a set of speed deadlifts. Uh, on the, with the uh, with the supine grip, so um, a fairly common injury uh, in powerlifting and strongman and that sort of thing. And unfortunately, uh, I got caught with it this time. So I wanted to make a little bit of a video though, just for you know, mainly for maybe some of you guys that ha unfortunately might have this injury in the future. Somebody watching this, you know, a year from now, um, that is trying to scan the internet, trying to figure out you know what to expect in the recovery what to expect in terms of the surgery and all that sort of thing. Because I know that when I first heard it, um, you know, between the date that I heard it and my surgery and that sort of thing, I was all over the internet and Google and YouTube and everything, trying to get as much information as I could um, about, you know, kind of what to expect and best course of action and that sort of thing. And, you know, there's a lot of kind of mixed, um, uh, kind, of, kind of mixed material out there. So what I found when I was kind of cruising for information after I got hurt was, um, you know, I would go on sites for, uh, you know, orthopedic doctors and physical therapy offices and that sort of thing. And I would kind of read material that they had online. And it seemed that a lot of their stuff was saying, you know, after the surgery, we're going to be looking at, you know, four to six months of, of, um, of recovery and that sort of thing. Um, and then I would look on, you know, say a social media profile of a power lifter that had, um, that had the surgery and, you know, they were back, you know, they were back training again in like six weeks. And so I was trying to figure out, you know, obviously I didn't want to re-injure myself by trying to rush back into it, but I didn't want to be overly cautious, which I know that, you know, a lot of people in the medical field that who work with just the general public, not necessarily, you know, competitors or lifters or that sort of thing, um, you know, they, they tend to be kind of overly cautious. And so I wanted to, to make sure I was doing the right thing. So um, I had the surgery and basically uh, I was in a sling for 10 days uh, following the surgery, I was not allowed to move it, uh, so it was pretty much immobilized for 10 days following the surgery, and that was just to make sure that the initial healing took care and that I didn't, um, I didn't do anything, you know, to accidentally straighten the arm or, or something like that. And then I was able to come, uh, kind of unwrap, unwrap the injury. Uh, 10 days post-op, I went and saw my surgeon, my surgeon, um, and I'll talk about the surgery here in a minute. Um, but 10 days post-op, I went to see the surgeon. He unwrapped the, uh, the incision site. Everything looked good. He had me do a few range of motion movements, which hurt pretty bad. Um, and then basically said he wanted me to, I didn't need to be put in a brace or anything like that. He just had me wear a sling. Um, and he said, you know, basically I was gonna be in a sling for the next five weeks or so. Uh, so which would be about six weeks, a little bit more from the date of the surgery. Um, basically six weeks of mostly being immobile. Um, and then I could return to return to action after that. So he didn't really recommend any physical therapy. Um, I talked to a friend of mine and a client, Dr. John Patrizo, um, who is also a physical therapist, and uh, he basically recommended the same thing. There's not a whole lot you can do with this repair. You just have to keep, uh, you know, keep the elbow mostly uh, mostly immobilized, um, you know, with a sling or something like that for for about six weeks from the surgery, and then. Hopefully after that, I should be good to go to, to start doing some light training again, and I'll have to work back up slowly, but I should be able to start start training after that. So, um, you know, as far as uh, what I'm allowed to do now, um, you know, the surgeon said I, he wanted me in the sling about 90% of the day. Uh, he said I could take it off maybe four or five times a day um, and, uh, and, you know, kind of just let my arm hang and let it stretch out a little bit, but I'm not allowed to forcefully stretch the elbow out um, or anything like that. I'm not allowed to curl up any kind of weight. So I can't do any kind of weight bearing with it and I can't stretch it out. But a few times a day I can take it out of the sling and, and kind of let it hang a little bit. So uh, definitely I can still feel it pulling quite a bit where the repair is. Uh, there's a lot of tightness there, which is why they don't want you to stretch it out. They kind of they kind of want it to heal tight. Uh, from what I understand from the surgeon and from Dr. Patrizo is they want it they want it to heal tight and then over time uh, when you start kind of either your rehab or your, your lifting again, they, they'll let it kind of stretch out and that will make for a, um, a stronger repair. So uh, I'm gonna follow their instructions since I don't have any experience with this myself. Um, as far as, you know, what has happened uh, since then, 
Uh, you guys can probably tell quite a bit of atrophy. I have not lifted weights in a month. I haven't done shit. So, um, you know, the right side of my body, especially my right shoulder, my right bicep, right tricep, right forearm has really shriveled up. Um, you know, it almost looks kind of cartoonish from a profile because my arms were pretty big. Um, uh, you know, you guys, a lot of, got a lot of comments and stuff about the size of my arms. I have, you know, just from training them and from gen just kind of from big, big arm genetics, I guess, um, you know, I've always had big arms. So when it, when it atrophied, it atrophied a lot. The effect was kind of pronounced. So my kids actually make fun of me, uh, you know, walking around the house with my, my tiny shriveled up arm. So, but, you know, just from not having lifting weights for, for a full month, you know, I, I, there's a lot of atrophy everywhere. So, um, you know, I'll have my work cut out for me, uh, when I get back going, uh, I can do some light leg stuff now, like leg press and leg extension and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, you know leg curls but you know, i really haven't messed around with a lot of that stuff it's just going light on that kind of work to me it just feels like kind of a waste of time so i'll be fine when i get back into it i'm not too worried about it i know i'll have to start light and i'll be sore and weak and all that kind of stuff but it'll give me something to do so a new challenge to try to try to overcome so i'm actually i'm, I'm looking forward to it quite a bit so you know psychologically um it's a little bit difficult to have your training kind of taken away from you so uh i'm definitely you know i've i've taken breaks before from training it's not, uh, it's not like I'm one of these guys that, you know, I have to train three days a week or I, you know, I go nuts or whatever. I've taken, you know, a week or off here or there, but um, never really been forced to take this much time off, uh, you know, from training. I guess the last time I took a significant amount of time off where I didn't lift was when I was in boot camp, uh, you know, for the Marine Corps. And at that point I didn't lift, you know, for 12 weeks, but, uh, you know, I was doing a lot of push-ups and pull-ups and a lot of other types of physical conditioning. So at least you're doing something. This is you know, this is going to wind up being six to eight weeks of, of doing nothing. And it's not really my voluntary choice, uh, you know, that this happened. So psychologically, it's been a little depressing. Um, but you know, it's gotten me, it's given me some time to focus on some other stuff, got more reading done, got more writing done. So you guys can go to my blog and see, I've gotten more articles put up. Uh, so it's opened up some time for me to spend on other, on other things. So I'm trying to make the most of it and not just lie around and bitch about it all the time. So, um, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, the surgery I wanted to talk about uh, real quick. Um, if you guys get, if, you, if anybody's watching this that has the, that, you know, a year from now, two years from now and stumble on this video, uh, maybe the technology changes in the way that they do the surgeries. But I was adamant that the surgeon uh, give me the uh, endo button technique um, is what it's called for the repair. There's a, a, a couple of different ways that they can do, uh, that they can do the tendon repair. Um, but from everything that I read, uh, the endo button is the strongest type of repair. Um, the world's strongest man, Brian Shaw, uh, had this exact same injury back in 2012. Um, and he had his repaired, um, and was actually, he had his repaired in April and competed in the world's strongest man in August. Um, and he had the endo button technique, uh, done as well. And he has not had the same injury since. So if it works for Brian Shaw, I figure it'll work for me. Um, and so that is basically in a nutshell where they, uh, they will drill a hole down through your forearm bone and they will run the end of the tendon down through the hole that they drill. And then they will attach the, uh, this endo button is what it's called. It's like a little metal piece. They, they kind of secure it somehow to the end of the tendon and then it, it attaches to the, to the, uh, to the backside of the bone. So it, they run the, 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 the tendon down through the bone and then they attach it to this endo button and it can't come back through the hole. And then they, then they actually, they actually run a screw down into that hole and, and, and fix the tendon even more securely with that screw. And it also allows them to kind of tension the tendon to where the way they want it. And that's, um, it's a uh, endo button. And I believe they call it an Arthrex screw. Uh, is the two little pieces of hardware that they'll put in there. And then from there, once they do that, you're pretty much done, but then you just have to kind of wait. And I guess you're just waiting really for the bone to kind of close up around everything and kind of let the, the, the tendon and the bone become one again uh, as much as possible. So um, that's what I'm waiting for. That's why you can't, you just can't really speed up healing with a tendon and a bone. You just have to wait. Um, but then I'm hoping that after it's all over with, I'll be back to normal. So um, all right, guys, I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, again, if anybody's watching this in the future that goes through the same thing, um, yeah, it hurts a lot at the beginning. Um, but, you know, I'm already uh, halfway through the recovery and hoping to be back in the gym soon. So it's not the end of the world, even though it might feel like it. So just do what your surgeon tells you to do. 
um, find a good physical therapist to consult with after the fact, a guy that uh, is used to working with lifters, um, a guy that has your same attitude about wanting to get back under the bar as soon as possible. Um, you know, I definitely recommend uh, a longtime client of mine, Dr. John Patrizo, who is a physical therapist up in New York, is as good as anybody as far as I'm concerned. So look him up and give him a call. And uh, anyways, uh, that's it. And uh, I appreciate it. And hopefully uh, more videos and more articles coming out soon. And uh, I'll talk to you then. All right, guys, thanks for your support. I appreciate everybody that sent me an email or a Facebook message or anything that's told me, you know, well wishes, get well soon, all that kind of stuff. I really appreciate you guys' support. It means a lot. So thanks a lot.